AccuStats Video Productions presents World Class Nine Ball. Welcome to the 2001 U.S. Open. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Rempe, along with a very special guest, fellow professional Dave Maddox. Hi, David. How you doing, Jim? We're in for a scorcher. Oh, this is going to be a dandy. We got two quality players here. Both know how to play, and I love doing the commentary when guys really know how to play. Uh, we have Nick Varner coming for, to you from Orlando, Florida now. <laughs> he used to be out of Owensboro, Kentucky. I guess we've got to change his nickname, the Kentucky, into the Floridian, I guess. And uh, Dennis Hatch from Buffalo, New York. And like I said, both these guys are really can play. So let's rack them up here and have a good match. Well, what I'm really looking forward to, Jim, is uh, the contrast and styles of these two players. You got the the legend Hall of Famer Nick Varner, and you got the the young guy who's uh, probably one of the highest octane offensive players in Dennis Hatch. And yeah, it's just going to be uh, looks looks to be a great matchup. Yeah, well, uh, Dennis is a fast player. Nick is a little bit of a slow player. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, it all depends on how his groove is for that day. I think. But uh, Dennis came along. I never forget when they both came along, him and Johnny Archer, they, they, right about the same time. In fact, they came along down here at the U.S. Open. And uh, when I first watched them play, uh, I said, gee, this, uh, this Dennis is uh, going to be a great player. And, you know, I even picked him to even excel a little bit better than Johnny. And, and well, I was wrong, obviously. I mean, Johnny really uh, has done a lot in the game. But Dennis got so much potential. I, I, I think he just hasn't worked as hard as, as Johnny has. But he can play. You'll see it because of his straight pool knowledge for one thing. He gets around the balls right. Uh, and as we do this commentary, I think the folks at home will see that. I mean, they do things right. And when you do things right, that's what you're trying to accomplish in the game anyway. I mean, it's the percentage. Take the best percentage all the time, and it'll pay dividends in the long run. Well, that's one of the things that that Nick Varner has really excelled at over his whole career is, uh, you know, there's no there's really no second guessing his shot selection or his patterns because talking about playing the ball the right way, man, Nick Varner. No, yeah, and he plays all games well. You know, he's won titles in every sport. I mean, every facet of the game. So, I mean, uh, you know, you've seen one of the greats in in action right here. A good safety, Dennis just laid down there. I mean. Uh, uh, I think he could see the side of the two. If he can, he's just going to uh, click it and probably try to put him straight back up table. Uh, no study. I mean, nerves are a little free. I mean, these kind of tournaments are, are funny. I mean, I, I always call them, they're, they're like a lottery with pressure because you not only got to <laughs> fade the luck on the table, but then there's a draw element. I mean, who you play first because the first match out of the box is always the toughest. And, and this match here, I mean, shouldn't be played the first one out. I mean, there's some matches going on where you, you know, not to take anything away from different players, but not a quality players like these two. These should definitely not be playing each other the first round. But as you have it and the way our game is, I mean, that's what you got to fade. So this is like what you would expect to see like in a quarterfinal semifinal kind of match you know exactly two, look out for two the players scratch of this here quality. around three cushions or yeah. two cushions and scratch actually the safety would have been perfect he would have had him behind the eight but the you know, he scratched anyway i mean let's see dennis has been away from the game now for a little while i think over a year uh, i mean uh, and, and that takes a little bit out of your play you know i mean even though uh, you know you, uh, you can play your nerves are frazzled especially coming back and you want to you want to get out, and especially the first rack, you want to get out there and, and, and give yourself some confidence. Well, like you say, you know, it, it, there's no way he, lo he lost his skills during that year off, but his tournament toughness, his match toughness is, is exactly. going to be a little bit, a little bit uh, suspect. The first, you know, especially playing that guy, very first match, a tough draw, Nick Varner. He's going to want to get straight in on this ball so he can draw straight up the table. See, this is this is key to your novice players. If he gets anywhere but straight, it makes the shot for position on the seven, you know, tough. If he gets straight, it's just drawn straight back. So that's why he's elevating the butt end of the cue. He's just going to try to stop the cue ball there. Hey, straight. So this way he can draw it straight back up. Even though he's got a, he, he could go to the cushion here, and he probably will, and hit, hit this ball uh, low right. And I always like to give the example. If you look at the cue ball like a uh, like a watch, he's hitting this right about five o'clock. A little bit of right hand spin and hitting it low. Sit so there, right up alongside the eight, and it's perfect. Shoot the ball, I mean, shoot the eight next in the side pocket, and uh, good way to start the match. Well, he did something I there that I don't know. I was surprised to see him do yeah. that. Well, I can, I can tell you why he did that. It's because of his confidence. Because he, if he was, had confidence in his stroke there, he would have rolled the ball just With a little, little bit inside. bounced. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes, and you got to do that. I mean, you play to the percentages 
that you're able to play at that particular time. That's yeah. a key in knowing how to win. But this is a tough shot. Anytime you cut the ball back like this, you've got to use a little bit of outside English. Otherwise, the eight ball can kick, turn over, whatever you want to call it. And it did a little bit there, but he slow rolled it, so it didn't really uh, change the direction of the, of the roll on the eight right away. Anyway, he got out here, and it's the score is one to nothing. Dennis. It, watch Dennis. I, mean, I don't know why he did this. He formed this habit a long time ago, but if you, as the camera stays on him through the match, his eyes always leave the table. He's either looking at somebody in the stands, looking at the cameraman, looking someplace. I don't I think like he should that. be a little more focused yeah, on what's going on inside the rails and not... Exactly. Yeah. That, uh, people always say to you, how do you eliminate the pressure? How do you get over the pressure in this game? And it, and it all comes down to focus, focus, focus. And, and, and you can't break your concentration by looking different places. doesn't mean he's thinking of anything, but his, watch his eyes. Like yeah. right there, his eyes were someplace else. Uh, I don't like that. But it, and it's just the habit he's formed through the years, and he probably is not even aware he's doing it. Nick's got the gum. There he goes. Yeah. It's nice being has. back in Norfolk here for this Open. I, I mean, this is this is our uh, most prestigious, our best event uh, this year. We're using the diamond tables. Um, which uh, you know aren't very generous. You know, I mean, they'll they'll make you make the pocket clear, or clean, I should say. He hit him with a soft break, drove the, dragged the cue ball to the side cushion and back over. He got bumped down table. Otherwise, he would have uh, been a little closer to the center. But when you do that, you want to bring the, the one ball up table. I think the one went in the side pocket mm -hmm. there. But the, the one usually goes up by where the chalk is on the right top of the table there. Well, this is a shot that's... Yeah, tough shot here. I mean, he's elevated the butt into the cue. Oh, he hit wow. that pure... That was pure. That's a confidence builder. Oh, he, yeah, I was just right going to say, he'll be pleased. See his eyes? See how his eyes just keep going up? What does he do that for? I don't know. I can, I'm not going to tell him in case he plays me. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to stop doing that. Anyway, I think he'll probably just draw this ball back for the five ball in the side pocket. Got a good stroke, you know. He's a good, solid stroke. There you couldn't go wrong. Even if you drew it too far, too yeah. short, any which way, you're still fine. Here, here you, you want to just make sure that you're closer to the middle of the table than you would be straight in on the six. Mm -hmm. Straight on the city, that's where, just where you pointed the cue stick. Uh, straight in would give you your only problem because you want to bounce back for the seven in the top left pocket. So he's looking to see what, because uh, what he's trying to do here, and this is key, when he comes off the six, you know, he's making the five, but when he comes off the six, he wants to come here, and then lay on the cushion so he has the angle on the seven. That's key right here. He might not have got where he wanted to, so he could change. He may just play it to the middle of the table if he... And he's, he's a left-hander, too, yeah. He's if he got a little steep on the six. Yeah, he changed not to do that. Otherwise, he would have hit hard just because he was a left-hander. He couldn't reach the shot. But mm -hmm. now the position would have been easier. Let me just show you two different ways here. If he was here... The position coming down off the seven right into oh, yeah. the angle of the yeah. shot would be different than now he's either going to come straight down or he's, or he's going to come over here and come that way again. See? And, and now this has turned out to be a missable shot because of the position error. Percentage, percentage, percentage. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he may not think about it consciously, but that shot he made on the three ball, you know, was that was a very tough shot, and he hit it like you say, pure as could be, and uh, you know they went on to get out. So uh, that that really that will do a lot to get him in his rhythm where he's extremely dangerous. Oh yeah, and it makes uh, Nick think, oh boy, I got somebody that's uh, a little bit in stroke here. He's got his work cut out for him, and and it puts pressure on you when a guy gets down on a shot like that and just hits it and hits it pure. I mean. Now you know you got to play to the best of your ability to win the match. There's no gimmies here. He's yeah. not going to give you the match. You know, Dennis got out of the sport different times during his career. I mean, uh, uh, the first time he got out of it is because uh, he had the potential of being a boxer, you know, and uh, a true friend of his, uh, Danny DiLiberto, uh, uh, took him down to Florida and introduced him to Angelo Dundee, all right? And his soft break drew the cue ball to the side and let it come around that time. But anyway, uh, so he, when he got around uh, Angelo Dundee, he took him to the gym, and they started, uh, you know, seeing him work out and everything. And 
Angela said he, he was like one of the best white hopes that he's seen in a while. Yeah. I mean, and, and he was trimmer. I mean, he was more in, and could hit, and he had speed and everything. He, was, he had a bunch of fights, won every fight that he fought, and looked like he could really go, but he didn't have the desire. He didn't want to work that hard. Same probably with his pool game. That's what I just said before about mm -hmm. him with, with Archer. Uh, and he had the potential, and I even asked him, why didn't you stay with it? He said, I just, didn't, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't stay in there and, and do what you had to do to be a champion. A lot of work to be a champion at any sport. There he, he got a little bit on the wrong side of the five, but not too bad. See how he keeps looking around? Uh, you know, that's bad. You, uh, people that want to look at players while they're playing and try to emulate them, uh, you don't want to pick up that habit from Dennis. He'll just hit this with a high right-hand ball and just take, the, uh, you know, the longer shot. No, he's coming around. We just missed the eight. If he had caught the eight there, that was a little yeah. dangerous because he just just missed the eight. If he caught the eight, he might have even scratched in the corner or, or he would have been down on the bottom cushion. So, I, uh, He's just going to go two rails back to where he is after the way he played the last shot. You know, one cushion and back mm -hmm. out. But, but you'll see, you know, like we stated in the beginning of this, I mean, they're both knowledgeable players about how to go about the rack right, even though sometimes they might not do it, but they don't do it on purpose because of the the confidence they feel at that particular mm -hmm. shot but good players especially the, the the old time straight pool players and i consider him an old time straight pool player even though he's not that old it, they want to get closer to the shot because then that narrows your percentage of missing a ball doesn't he have like a 300 ball run in straight pool or no he probably yes. does i don't know what his high run is but he probably did all those northeast guys i mean you know myself included we we came up playing straight pool mm -hmm. and, and you know, I mean, he's from a town up there with the Irving Crane, I mean, uh, Mike Siegel, Larry Hubbard, uh, you know, the Babe Cranfield. I mean, just the slew of them, all great straight pool players in their own right. And uh, so he's picked up a lot of that. Well, you said it. Hopkins, Siegel, yourself. Right. You know, that's but I was just talking more or less yeah. up, up around the Buffalo and Rochester mm -hmm. area, all those guys up there. So pretty quickly, it's 3-0 for Dennis. Well, he moves pretty fast, uh, so. And then, then that's a, that all surfaced from one misplayed safety by Nick where he scratched right. on the ball. Right. Nick's getting a little worried now. You don't want you don't want a guy to get too far out ahead. Uh, these pockets are pretty, uh, well, it's the beginning of the point. tournament. They're playing a little generous right now, and they will tighten up, but they're still pretty tight. You still have to, if you hit them with a firm pace, uh, you better hit it pure, otherwise it's going to pop out on you. All right, I got a little play to this rack. You can see the five untied up. Let's get into this mm -hmm. rack, David, and, and try to explain uh, what the guy's going to try to do here. You know he wants to get to the two. Uh, he's going to probably, if I can draw some things here. Looks like he's going to draw this straight back from the way he's queuing, or, or he's going to follow this around. No, drawing a straight back, but let's see where he gets here. Well, he wanted, would have liked they got straight so he could bounce this way and come over here like that and back up to here, but he's concentrating on what he wants to do there with the five. Uh, he's got to get by the three, by the nine. Right. The, if the five goes in the side, I predict he'll play for the five in the side pocket. That's okay. perfect. That's good. I think he's going to wind up playing for the five. In the side past the eight. Yeah, that's what he's looking yeah. for right now. He's looking to, looking to probably come up in here and back out like that. I mean, that's what, after he gets position on this ball. In other words, stop mm -hmm. the cue ball there and then shoot the two. And, you know, hit that way and come in that way. That's what he's doing. He's playing for the bigger angle on the two ball. And see, rather here, here's another thing. Here's another thing that a straight pull player will do. Instead of just coming off here and coming up in here, he's going to come off here, bump, bump, and let it come back come into back the into angle, the line into the, the line of, yeah. the, of the of the next shot. If he could pinch this, and I don't think he could, to play the five over in that pocket, but I think that's off that shot. I think he's going to do exactly what I said. Ooh, that one, uh, what they call it in England, it wiped its feet. This was a good <laughs> shot, though. I um, mean, he came one cushion, and uh, you, that he cut the ball. On the, on the left side of the pocket, and that's mm -hmm. what caused that to do that. And he did that to give himself a bigger angle so he could come to just one cushion. Either way, he got to where he wanted to get. So.
Okay, he's on the wrong side here now. I mean, he, he, he don't want to shoot the eight in the same pocket because the eight's froze. In other words, because of the angle, he's got in a seven. Uh, I mean, he's, he could either go, okay, let's go here. Here we go. He could either come over here, draw the cue ball over here, and try to come underneath and back up that way. I think that's the shot. Mm -hmm. I think that's the shot because... Uh, you know, I don't want to shoot the eight down the same corner. He's got the bad angle, but you got to make sure. And and it stems from the second cushion. If when, when, I, when I give lessons at home, I really insist that, uh, that the second cushion is the most important uh, rail on the table because that's what you're always playing for. In other words, he, when he comes off here and hits there, you want to hit the second cushion there. Right. That's what you're aiming for. Even if you do it wrong, hit there or there. Even if you do it wrong. You should analyze after you shoot the shot, and, and it continues to keep you informed on how the table's playing. Here, oh, that ball popped out. Popped out on him. Is he, uh, you know, I'll bet he took his eye off that shot. I guarantee that's what happened on the shot. He was so interested in where the cue ball was going uh, because he's been away from the game, and there it is right there. That's what the, you know, competing and not competing does to you. I mean, he just took his eye off that shot. Well, there was a lot going on on that shot. You know, there was uh, the pace that he had to hit it with the amount of spin that he had to hit it. And uh, like you said, he was trying to so precisely control the direction of the cue ball. He, you know, he just uh, didn't give quite the focus on the seven that he should have. Right. His eyes probably went right to the side cushion there, and that's what happened. How do you like to play position on the eight? Go I around? Just go around three, three cushions straight yeah. up. And, uh, you know, so your so yeah. cue ball's coming into here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should have drew it out. It he did it with one cushion, which is a good shot, too. Yeah, you, in, in that kind of shot, you like hitting it with a little bit of inside English. It seems like it's, it makes the shot easier. Just didn't hit it quite hard enough. And that was caused because he's been in his chair for the last three yeah. rounds. And, he, and he's lost the, you know, the, the feel for how, how the speed of the table is right now. Now, what he would like to do is lay the cue ball on the headrail and bring the cue ball behind the nine. Exactly, you know, that's exactly uh, what he's going to do. Uh, and Nick's won uh, you know, a bunch of bank pool tournaments, and uh, it, it, he might go for this, uh, but with the score the what it is right now, a lot of time, times you do things because of what the score is here. I mean, uh, percentage here, though, I, I like the safety, trying to put him behind the nine, because even yeah. if you don't, you're going to give him a bank where he probably can't get position on the nine ball. And the Well, you know, the main thing about the kind of a two-way bank safety shot is that you're not going to bring the cue ball far enough down the table to create a comfortable distance for me. You know, if you can leave the guy five feet away from the ball, he's going to be able to do too much. Oh, he went for the bank. Ah, there's, there you go, the Kentuckian. I told you, he banked so good that, that it laid right for him. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes you got to go for that when you feel it. You know, being behind like that, sometimes you, 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 because of the score the way it is, I guarantee if he was ahead, he wouldn't have shot that. No. It was a big, big ball. Instead of four nothing, it's a three to one, and, and, and it's a ball game. Well, he hit at a really nice speed. You know that that's a that's a mistake that you'll see people make a lot. Is they're going to take that bank, but they hit it too hard. Yeah. And 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 that ball hit ten percent harder probably would not have gone because, like you said, it wiped its feet going in. <laughs> so it was it didn't go clean in the pocket. You know, so it had a little work to get in there, and at that speed, it could do that. Yeah. But, yeah. Let's take a look again at that uh, at that shot. Watch his eyes. Well, he kept his eyes on the shot, but the, he just missed the shot. I mean, because of the inside English, he hit that with a lot of left-hand spin. Uh, and he just missed the ball. Just missed the ball. He didn't take his eyes off it, which, which I thought would have been the cause of it. Look at Nick. See about the one ball in the side pocket? I think Nick learned something from watching yeah, Dennis break. And look at there. I mean, see the lucky ball with this game. If the seven's not there, it's a Cosmo. I mean, it's an easy run out. <laughs> He's yeah, going to be dancing the around there, the table. That's why I said it's, it's so much luck in this game. And then, oh, it's really tough here is because there's, there's not a good place to push to. Right. Usually when you push out, you don't want to have uh, your opponent take the shot. You want to push out to where you're going to take it, even though the percentages are bad for you. But Exactly. You just want, in other words, you're just trying to improve your percentage on the shot that's laying right. Right now his percentage is real bad. I mean, to kick the ball and why not put anything safe. So he's going to put it someplace where it's uh, a little bit better, but not in the other guy's favor to where Dennis would shoot the shot. Well, he's going to try to put the three in a more difficult position. That's a... Uh 
I thought he was going to try to put the three over by the cushion, and yeah. I, you know, that probably would have been a good play. That would have been a good play if he could have put it up by the side pocket to where you would have had a good, you know, good shape on it. Well, make the position more difficult from the three to the four in case he did give up something later yeah. on. Exactly. But the, uh, here, I mean, to give the shot, he wants to hit this thin and come around two cushions, try to put him underneath the seven, but it's a super tough shot. It's super tough only because you have to hit the two so thin, so thin. where the pocket is. Right. You know? and, and the scratch is on here in case you hit it too thick. And, of course, to get behind the three, very difficult anyway. Because we're going to get to see the whole shot right here. These right balls here. aren't going to be going to. And he hit it thin. He got perfect right behind the sevens. Good shot. Oh, great shot. I think he's even got far enough up on the seven where he can't kick to the, uh, to the cushion to hit the two. And, and knock it down table. Right. A, a pretty easy kick safety. If it's, if it's two inches further up, easy kick safety and exactly and he could have stopped the cue ball where the two is and kicked the two two cushions and put it behind the five yeah, ball yeah well here he's got to come underneath it i think underneath it just send it down table try to get a little bit of a roll well really the only thing that happened in his favor on this is that the cue ball is close to the cushion yeah so that limits nick's options here uh he may if he if he elects to shoot the two in the lower left hand corner he may try to go above the three and play the three ball on the lower right. Well, on this Depending one, depending on how be, thin. Yeah, be, no, because this is laying the way it's laying. I mean, he can't get just up straight there. across. Yeah, he's yeah. just going to just make the ball center ball. Concentrate, just make the ball. This is tough. I right, see it's a little st more steep than this is tough. You just got to just follow through and stay down on this shot. Up a little bit. Yeah, he lifted up. He, I, it figured to be a safety if he missed it. If he overcut it, figured to go yeah. right about in there. And if he and if. Uh, Nick is going to be negotiating the nine on the next shot. He's going to try to hit this then and go two cushions behind the nine. And he's hit this. Ooh, excellent. Wow, is right. This is a, a... That was a great shot. There's no way to kick for this. I mean, I mean, if he goes cross, you know, short side, I mean, he's only got half a ball to hit. Uh, if he goes up and down, he's got to hit it with spin because the seven's in the way. Hard to control on new cloth. Yeah. And if he goes two cushions in the in the lower left hand corner and out that way that puts both you know that puts both balls yeah i'm going to show you something here what the what what you look at when you're banking this type of ball or when you're trying to kick i think he's going to well he's going that way let's if he goes this way i can't show you but the anyway that's no good i can't show you nope Bad he caught hit. the four well, I would have preferred I, going up. I, I mean, just to show you what I would have tried to do. He's got ball in hand. I, when he when he kicked at this ball, if he'd have went up and tried to come down and hit it, you don't try to hit the ball. You pick a spot somewhere down in here on the cushion or whatever like that, and you look through it. So you forget the ball is there, and you just try to kick to a, you know, point on the cushion. Gives you a bigger area. It's more consistent where the rail is rather than where the ball oh, yeah. is. So another pretty easy out for um, for Dennis. Yep, the balls are kind of like a, you know, you know, the balls either let you win or, or keep you from winning sometimes. Sometimes he, he, you really got to fight to win. He's, he's got to do, I mean, the only thing that looks like any problem at all, which is not really a problem, seven to the eight, you know, and you can get, and you can get above the seven, below the seven. Right. You, I, know. you know, I like being on this side of the seven, you know, wind up on this side of the seven. In other words, get an yeah. angle on the four and to the five, I mean, and then bounce over to where I just made the mark. Then you just got one cushion. That's what he's going to do. Yeah, that way but you're, you're going to the more open side of the table and exactly. play the eight in the lower left corner. Right. If the eight was more in the center, then, then he would have went three cushions around the table. Still might do that, but I like the... Yeah, I, I, I like your way. This table is beautiful. It's absolutely incredible. Oh, and the grain in this wood is gorgeous, too. I love playing on wooden tables. Well, for the viewers, uh, you know, I'm sh don't adjust your set. That table is that beautiful. I mean, it's, uh, it's solid Coca Bola. And uh, so much figure in the wood. It's it's a it's a beautiful backdrop to a great game. See, so if he got over just a little bit further, he would have used the, the the second cushion. Now he might not use the second cushion. He might. He might not. It's up to him. No. See, so he didn't. I don't like that. Yeah, I kind of like it's, that because of the angle that he had. He could get straight here though. Oh. I mean, well, but, you know, like you were talking about earlier, if he plays to go into the second cushion, he's going into the line into on the, the line, eight. Any, right. Exactly. Know? 
Um, he has a smaller area to stop in going straight down the table. But he didn't have a, uh, a big enough angle on the seven ball. If he had just another inch, it would have yeah. made the shot easy. Uh, but because of the way it laid, that's it was, I think, better coming down that way. I mean, you would have had to hit it perfect like he just did to get straight. Uh, and I don't think he's that straight. I think he could pop this with a little yeah. bit of right-hand spin and come around two cushions for the same pocket on the nine. This is the same pocket on the nine. Just smooth stroke this, and he, he's, uh, he's... He didn't pop up. it enough. But the, he turned out all right. Just make the nine on the side. But he didn't pop that enough. I would have popped that a little bit more. Oh, he hit the Ooh, point he going the in. Point, and it but went. See, he had enough sense wow. to hit it soft. That's Irving Crane style, you know. If mm. you're just making the shooting to make the ball, hit it soft. Give yourself more of a chance to make it. 4-1 Dennis Hatch. We see. Still got a long way to go. It's still early in the match, so... Uh, I really noticed what you were talking about on that last, you know, when he was looking at the eight, he kept looking up in the stands. He was looking for like yeah. maybe, uh, maybe Irving Crane to like maybe give you a, <laughs> uh, give him a nod to, you know, hit it with high inside or pop it off the cushion. Or. You know, most pool players play better when they have what they call as an ear man. I remember Mike <laughs> oh. Siegel. I mean, I mean, if he didn't have his ear man someplace, I mean, he didn't play as well as he did when he did have it. But uh, it's... Dennis should hire an ear man so he can look at him all the time. Well, the thing about both Mike. Using that break. The, the thing about Mike is uh, if, if he couldn't find one, he would be his own. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> I right. love him, though. Yeah, He's great. Yeah, yeah he, hit it, he hit it soft there. But everybody's going to start using that soft break. Yeah. Well, the eight's a little touchy. If it goes in the side, it's not a problem. But it's pretty close to the point over there. Uh, really a couple of, you know, the only, one of the benefits of this is the s position of the six, seven, eight, you know, so he's going to be in that vicinity. He can get good on the eight. Yeah, see, everything comes down to the second cushion. Again, look at where he wants to go. He wants to come. This is where you have to judge. You want to come between the six and the eight. See? Right there. See, that's Beautiful judgment. Shot. See, see how yeah. good you got to play? But second cushion is key. It's the key of the, of the whole positional play. He, again, wants to get an angle on the three ball. This time he's going to try to lay on the side rail, but he's gone a little bit yeah, too he's, far. Yeah. But he's, he's still in good shape. Well, he's he's uh, just going to draw the cue ball up past the nine. Yeah, he's got to judge it just perfectly to, you know, right the... He's left-handed. That's helpful on this... Right. ...where the where the balls are on this right. shot. But he's got, he's got to draw this up about a little bit further than eight high, right? Yeah. See, that's where he's putting the cue... I mean, he's pointing there, but he doesn't have the angle to get there. I mean, he has the that's angle to come to the left of the table. That's Which a little dangerous to try to get that close to the seven. Yeah. You know, that's a, that seven can be a big ball. you got to judge your draw here. Okay, he hit it super, really super. Now this is just make the ball put a little left-hand spin. That's all. No big deal here. Just a little left-hand spin to make sure that the, you know, the ball doesn't kick on you. Usually when you shoot shots like this, you love putting outside English on and he decided to go back and forth, which sometimes is better because you can you can hit the ball harder and gives you more confidence. And in, in most you, good you, players prefer to do that. You eliminate the possibility of that skid right. on that shot by hitting at that pace. Right. Plus, with the outside English, it eliminates yeah. that. Yeah, it kind of looked like he was making a half-hearted attempt to bump the eight. You know, he thought, well, maybe if I bump the eight, because well, it looked like yeah. it, it looked like it kind of brushed it, but not. It didn't change its position enough to. Uh, to alter this position shot. Right. If the eight was uh, closer to the cushion, I think, yeah, that would have been the right shot. But I, I think, uh, I don't know, doesn't the eight go in the side pocket? I, I don't look think at it, it goes in the side, but, uh, he, you know, he, he, he could play this off the eight. Yeah, that's what he did. That's a little, well, it's risky only because you're trying to control too many balls, and the cue ball ran into the nine. Yeah, and he had, <laughs> he had right hand spin on that to check the English to, so he yeah, didn't come over yeah. too far to the right hand. Here, I mean, you're just going to go right across the table. Yeah, but he's, he's, down. he's still in pretty good shape. This is a, yeah. you know, just back and forth across twice. And yeah, yep, here we go, 5-1. 5-1, he's getting some confidence. Yeah. Uh, Tim, 
there's something unusual about the this tournament. And one that they were using the Sardo tight rack, which is a great mechanism for making sure that the balls are tight. But what is the position of the object balls? Compared well, to what they normally you know, in are. The, in the last tournaments and, and since we started using this this particular type of cloth, I mean, the, uh, the corner ball has been going every time. So what they've done in this tournament, they've put the nine ball on the spot. Usually the one went on the spot, but now the nine is on the spot. So they've actually racked them up about two or three inches higher. But hasn't the corner ball been going here? It's still been going. The right corner then. ball and, went straight in. And, and, and they don't understand. I don't know why. It, it's the cloth. It slides. As soon as you find out what speed they hit it, it slides that amount, and you wind up like there, he hit it soft, you know, going to the side break, and he's making the corner ball. It just seems no matter what you do, the corner ball goes in, or you make the one ball on the side, and, and it's not good for pool. I talked to some of the spectators at terms and and they're like hoping guys don't make balls on the break anymore so they can see some pool, you know, because too many balls are going on the break, and... and you know, I think we should go back, to, uh, or not go back, but go to 10 ball. I think uh, you'll make less balls on the break, and, and you'll see more... Uh, you know, more positional play and, and, and more safety pool. play. There, more safety, yeah, more, yeah, you have more pool. More pool. Pool, pool yeah. is supposed to be that. That's what pool's all about. Well, also uh, breaking from the box is supposed to be um, beneficial to more play, less balls on the break, less corner ball action you know the side you know the side rail oh, break yeah, with the side, corner yeah. ball goes boom every, every, yeah, time. every time now now the players are breaking from the box but they've adjusted to that too yeah you know and so. there's always a way to adjust yeah i mean you get yeah. some of the younger guys wind wind up uh, tapping the balls i mean if you use a scale of uh, one to ten is <laughs> for two. speed i mean they're hitting at a two rather than a ten and they're making it the one ball on the side i mean it's just you know it's ruining the game uh, and something has to be done because the game shouldn't be in the break. It should be the game that uh, that's important. It's a good shot. I mean, he's a little bit steep. Now he's going to have to do a little something to get on the five. You know, two inches if the ball stops. Two inches before that, you know, he bunts the ball in, rolls up, five on the side. Yeah, he's probably played the five up in the corner next. Uh, he tried wide. to soft spin it, and uh, he yeah, he's he's gotten away with it halfway. Nick's going to kick this ball in, but. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, it's not what it yeah. could have been. Yeah, you should. You know. Um, you know, Dennis Hatch in stroke playing a lot of tournaments. Don't miss that ball. No, he was just, yeah, that's true. He was just trying to finesse that ball in and hit it a little fat. Right. This is a little far out from the pocket. Nick's looking. If he kicks this, he can kick it down, you know, one cushion down the table. And he's going for the shot. He's too he far could, behind could, to be fooling around. He goes, right. he goes all out at it and yeah. two cushions around for position nice in the side. Yeah. There. And he's come up short on the position, but... And if the five goes by the no, six, I think he got far enough. And the five goes by the six, I think he's got about three quarters of a pocket. But the, I think he'll cut this ball on the side anyway. Which leaves about two inches, right, of yeah. the pocket, <laughs> which is not very much. <laughs> at least these pockets are four and a half inches for uh, the viewers at home. And uh, also on the diamond tables, as yeah. many of you know, it's a very, uh, very deep shelf. Look at how far out he's hitting on the cue ball. Well, watch when he lines up the shot. I mean, he's going to hit the cue ball way to the left. You know, he's not actually going to wind up hitting the cue ball there, but he aims that far out. So, right. You know, people have, a lot of times people ask you, uh, well, how do you aim? What do you aim at? Whatever. Everybody's different. You can't go yeah. by that. So uh, when he, uh, if he shoots the shot like he just got down before to aim at the ball, watch how far out to the left he is. Look but he that. knows the point on the cue ball that the tip is going to wind up when he actually right. pulls the trigger. He's going to come trigger. in a little bit. This isn't No, the actually, he, he did play to hit that, that far out. I, I didn't know he was going to play. That was a little dangerous. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but he might be a little rattled right now, and he shot it his most comfortable way of shooting the shot, and that's what you yeah. do. Yeah. You do. I mean, make sure you make the ball. Uh, this, this is, this is a very tough two-ball sequence right here just to make... All he has to do right here is concentrate on making the six, but just making the six still leaves a tough shot on the seven. Yeah. And yeah. still leaves him eight feet away from the nine. Right. And he's just going to stop it there and draw, draw an inch or so. Man, if he can just stop the ball and make the six, he's happy with that from yeah. that position. Yeah, he's off the cushion at least, and so now he's got to come with the shot. This is a... Uh this is where uh, you know you know if you're if you're going to win a tournament, you got to make these shots when you're behind. Well, this is a blood test. To yeah, say. Yes, it is. This is one of the tougher shots on the table because Q, your, the butt of your cue is going to be elevated because you're next to the cushion. That means you're hitting down on the cue ball, which you're, you have to allow for a swerve. If uh, you know swerve, if you hit it a little a off curve. center. Yeah. Yeah. 
a little more deflection with the cue stick. I mean, so there's a lot going on in this shot. I mean, you know, you you would you would see a lay person if Nick misses this ball and go, oh, I mean, you know, he was he was almost straight in. There's a lot going on, like you said, on this shot. It makes it tough. Pound oh, I like wow. that. That's the way I like right to shot. You know what that Great does, shot. Dave? You know, when you pound the shot like that, when the cue ball hits the seven, it leaves the table. And it leaves the table as soon as you hit it, too. So that little squirt, that little curvature, it's not there. The ball's right. in the air. It, and, it, so it's and, not being affected by the felt, is what you're saying. Right, which is, right. Yeah. That's why you hit it that hard. See, that's just pure knowledge. That's, that's what good players know and uh, suckers don't. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, there you but go. But if you watch this tape and watch it carefully, you just got smartened up. <laughs> Anyway, 5-2, still got a contest. Especially the way this table's been breaking. Yeah. I mean, you know, 5-2 yeah. is, you know. Soft break is going to hit this a little low to the, to the to his left. Bring the cue ball, side Off rail, side. back up table. Watch it on scratch. Yeah. He's actually trying to bring the cue, cue ball. He got a little roll here. Got kicked in. I don't know if he can see this. He's Look, I think he can see it. Well, 3-6 six, is yeah. tough regardless. Tough. There's so. not really a good way to get to it. I mean, you know, if he gets the cue ball... Uh, close to the middle of the table, a little bit on the left side, he might be able to go up there, but he's not looking to run this rack out. Well, yes, he is. Yes, he is. See, the five goes in the same pocket that the one does. If you make the one and come down here for the two, if let me just show you here. You know, after you get, you try to get someplace on the two, but your last posi position would want to be there with the, to get on the five because you can break that five. Uh, uh, if no, that's this, the six and This the is the three and the six. Oh, oh, the, okay. Yeah. Look like the seven. Yeah, it's the three and the six. It's the oh. one, two, three, six. Oh, yeah, six the seven's is... down table here. I didn't see that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, my mistake. Yeah, he's going to wind up playing safe off the three ball probably, like you said in the beginning. Make that ball. Just make sure you make the ball. Always a well, bump get, the ooh. two. Yeah, bump the two. Well, you but know, you here. might play a combination here. I mean, there's, uh, you know, might play the combination, could play a billiard, could uh, play a safety. Uh, I don't think he's, uh, if well, he the makes the two, he can't uh, really get a good safety on the three ball. Well, that's right. Plus, if he does shoot the combination or the billiard, missing it doesn't punish him unless he leaves the nine right in the hole with, with access off of the two. Because even if he's got a good shot at the two, it's not likely he's going to be able to break out the three six. Yeah, and, and what he's doing right now, he's weighing up all the percentages. Should he go for that? Where is he going to leave the two? What's the percentage on that? And a pool player's mind acts real fast with all this, and, and, he, and they usually make the right uh, judgment with it. Uh, well, another factor here, too, is if he plays the combination, where is he going to leave the cue ball? But he's yeah, not going to play. He's going to float down underneath the nine. He's going to float down. Watch. He's going to hit the cue ball high. Just float right down here. Put this up here. Put him underneath the nine. And that's what he did. Now he let him kick at it. I mean, the kick is pretty easy. Actually, it's not because it's a, uh, it's beyond the point of hitting above the side, and it's too uh, far up to hit it uh, below the side to get well, to it. Dennis jumps really well, but you know, given the position of the two, you know, he may play a jump safety instead of trying to jump and make the ball because he doesn't really get rewarded if he makes it. Ooh. He shortened the angle there by hitting yeah. above the side pocket, hit the cue ball with low right-hand English to stiff the shot. Again, he's not going to shoot this shot. He's going to play some kind of safety again. Well, if he can shoot the ball and get far enough down where he can clip the left side of the three with the cue ball, he may. Say that again. Shoot the two, get right here, clip the left side of the three, leave the three right here in the yeah, cue ball down table. Tough shot, though. I mean, you got to hit the, if you hit the three too thick, it's going to bounce out. Well, the good thing is that the six is going to just you know, basically stop the three. Well, if you hit it, you know. it, hit it into the six, yeah. if you hit it, you know, at an angle, it's going to come out. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't think he's going to shoot this shot. I think he's going to play safe off it. I think he's looking at what you just said, but uh, I think... What, what, would the, what would the safety be from this shot? See here, let's show this shot here. What he's, what, he, what David's saying, uh, people, I mean, if he stops the cue ball in here somewhere yeah. like that, yeah. to come up here, tick this ball, and come out, you know, boom, 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 like that. But what happens if you hit the, if you hit the three into, the, into there, it's going to bounce out to the middle of the table. If you so hit it too full. If you hit it yes. too full, yes. and it, it's a tough, tough little shot. Uh, what happened just, there? What was all that about? 
<laughs> he was trying to just get further over to yeah. the middle of the table to yeah. do what you said. Yeah. But now Dennis is going to be in a very good position because he can go between the seven and the nine and get on the correct side to shoot that shot where you cut the three into the six and bring the cue ball back down table. Right. I think he might just, just uh, I like putting the two across. ball up here and come and bring the cue ball over here. I don't like that shot at all. Well, not that way, no. At all. I like putting the ball up amongst them balls and putting them behind the nine so if he kicks, he's going to disturb everything. So now he has the only, the only thing, the only benefit of this is he's going to leave distance. He's going to do what you said, and he's cut it a little bit and bounced just a little bit, but it's okay. Well, he, he really hit it too thickly because the cue ball, he wanted the cue ball in the yeah, end rail. Yeah, exactly. The speed you know? would have been different if he hit it yeah, thin. Yeah. Not only would the three not have gone as far, the cue ball would have gone farther. Right. So he's so, got to watch. He could cross this ball. A couple more things here. These are getting entries. I like to He can cross this. In other words, we shoot the cue ball into there, bring the three down here, and let the cue ball stay. But that's no good because the next player can drag the cue ball underneath here. So I like playing no the good. cue ball behind the 5-8. Yeah. Right? He's going to get thin the cue off ball. of the three. Draw on the cue ball. He let it get away. He got away from him. But it's okay because these balls were here. And, and I mean, he's not. you know he's not going to play this combination. It's too tough a shot. He's going to cross this. Well, this is kind cross, of a two-way shot. He's going to bring the cue ball down here, cross this. Cue ball comes back up here. Three comes over here. Sometimes guys just hit it high, try to hit it high. Well, the danger in hitting it high, look at this. Look at he's this. going to get, get in there. Ooh, oh. baby doll. Look at that. Jelly roll. <laughs> Hello. Well, when you do the right things, good things happen, see? Yeah. Well, that was a shot where Dennis was playing the cue ball all the way. Yeah. Because the three ball hit the end rail. Right. I mean, you know, if he were playing the two-way shot, the three ball hits above the uh, above the corner and goes back to the end rail, and the cue ball goes up table. Right. Right. Yeah. He was playing the cue ball all the way. You know, that's uh, that's a sign of co he's getting uh, his confidence is improving. I think he got a fortunate, uh, a little fortunate yeah. that went behind the eight, but yeah, he did play to get the cue ball as close to that top cushion as he could. And get a little lucky, and he did. I mean, he did things right. Oops. Oh. He missed that mm. just a fraction. But, yep. I mean, this is a miss. Yeah, and, this, uh, is a, this is a big rack. I mean, you're starting to go into a little bit of a, a more commanding lead with this rack, and you're breaking. Yeah, 6-2 six, uh, six will be the score if Dennis runs these balls. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he basically just gets on one ball. He gets on the five, and that's it. Yeah. Well, the six, seven to the eight is seven a little to bit the tough. Eight. I like coming straight up the table again with the kind of the get straight on the seven, draw it straight up the table. Or get the bigger angle and then come one cushion to the other side cushion. It all depends what you feel more comfortable with. He's looking at the table different than I am, too, because he's a left-hander. Yeah. So he could come down in here to, have to come one cushion off the seven. Or he can try to get straight over in here and just draw it straight back up. And he's kind of gotten in between. He's gotten in between. <laughs> he's going to more pound this ball and go back, I think. He's yeah. going to be shooting the eight in the upper left-hand pocket, but upper he's going to have to hit yeah. it with a lot of pace. Yeah, he's going to pound this a little bit. Yep. Now that shot just plays so much more easy if you have a little steeper angle on the seven. Exactly, right. You want to make things as effortly as possible when you play this game. This is one cushion straight down the table. If Dennis wins this match, uh, you know, he's a force to be reckoned with in a tournament, especially when, uh, you know, he hasn't played in a while and he comes out and he beats, the, you know, one of the better players. Uh, that's what makes you win tournaments. Six to two, Dennis Hatch over Nick Varner. Well, the, ha the hatchet man must have sharpened up his uh, uh, tools before he came in. The hatchet man, he's so close to the border up there in Buffalo. I mean, he could have been a <laughs> snooker player, you know. I mean, he probably has played a little snooker in his day. There's a lot of good players, uh, meaning snooker players around the Toronto area. And Cliff Thorburn, and I mean, a whole bunch of them came from mm -hmm. around there. Well, but as straight as he shoots, it wouldn't surprise you that he spent some time on a 6 by 12 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, I, I heard Earl refer to uh, uh, 
Dennis shoots as straight as a Martian or something like that, and Martians don't shoot that straight or something like that. <laughs> oh, look at that little bump. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that yeah. little bump. I think that uh, the what is four it? Ball. The four ball got in That's the way a, there, but I think the combination's makeable. It's just that you're going to lose the one, so you've got to hit this a little firmer and draw it and, you know, let the cue ball come straight in the middle of the table. The one bounces off the cushion, get, comes to the middle of the table. It's, it's not very easy to control both the one and the cue ball yeah. off of this shot. But, but you have to try to mm -hmm. here, otherwise it's yeah. going to get away from you. He's playing it with high. He See, hit that a little that roughly, would, and it went... Yeah. But they, they, well, the one came to the middle of the table, and uh, he followed the cue ball. And it, it, I don't know if he planned all that, but it worked out rather well. <laughs> Just make the, make the one here. Just stop the ball. This you could play to get on the cushion because you, it, it, it makes the getting on the six a lot easier. And it's not that tough to get on the cushion here. Now the cue ball is going know, in the right yeah, direction. Yeah, a little bit of right yeah. hand spin. In, you know, I... By playing it to like where it. he just pointed, he has to deal with the nine, or the nine becomes more, well, much more in the shot. Side. Yeah, this is what you feel comfortable with. I mean, it's not that tough to get on. Yeah, this that is was one natural. Of those, this is one of those fifty-fifty. Yeah, and it's rare in pool that there that there are those more times exactly. than not. You know, there is a favored way to play it. Right, and that was one where it was a personal preference. You know, you're going to be as successful shooting it either way. Right, and he he got absolutely perfect on this, where he can just stay there and play the six uh, yeah. easily. Yeah, he didn't have such a steep angle that he had to go back and forth or deal with the nine or yeah. You know, so now, what do, you, just, what do you play for here, David? When you get a shot on the on the eight ball, do you play for it to go two cushions back and forth for the nine in the same pocket, or do you stop the eight ball there and shoot the nine in the, in the side pocket where the seven's going? Well, I'm a I'm a believer in the if you have position, why play it philosophy. It, well, that's you that's know. the point. Less movement on the cue ball, the better off Absolutely. you are. He'll draw back to the cushion here. And you just bounce the ball yeah, off see, the he's cushion, to make three it or four stop. rails. He just draw it up here a couple inches. That's, that's what the, I mean, that's a good point uh, that uh, what David said there. I mean, that's what the players should always do. Always think of the less movement on the cue ball, the better off you are. You don't want to make this game more complicated than what it is because... <laughs> Lord knows, it's complicated <laughs> enough. Exactly. <laughs> All right, again, on this kind of a shot, you want to hit it with a little bit of outside English. You don't want the ball to turn over with you. All these little shots like that, anything can happen if you hit it with a center ball or a little bit of inside English. So it's not one that you're going to roll by, right. any, you know, right. by any stretch. After nine games, a Dennis Hatch, seven. Nick Varner, a deuce. Okay. Still a long way to go. Anything can happen. I've seen both these guys come from more, uh, a lot further behind than, uh -huh. than this. So, uh, did Nick change gum yet, or has he still got the same pace? <laughs> well, he was he was working on his hair there a minute ago, but now he's working on the a little harder on the gum. There, there it is. It's. You know, I, I just I just hope that Nick doesn't start like taking creatine or something because his <laughs> jaw muscles are going to swell up. <laughs> what a great guy he is. All right, same soft break again. Here it is. Soft break out watch, of the box. Watch the four ball. They're right in the corner pocket. <laughs> I mean, that's pitiful. I mean, that's pitiful. <laughs> Six ball. Eh, pool shouldn't be like that, but that's what we have to contend with, so that's what we'll play. Yeah, this is a pretty shootable, uh, makeable bank. And, yeah, uh, and the two's positions automatic. There, right? Yeah, and he's going to shoot this. You get, you get reward if you make the bank, and, and you don't necessarily get punished, if, you know, depending on the pace that you hit it. Right. I wouldn't hit this with it. I would hit it with a pace to bring the cue ball. Or if I miss this ball, leave the, leave the one out in here somewhere. Oh. Whoa, he hit it with a high ball and kept the cue ball there. A little top stop. Mm -hmm. Well, the shot laid better than what I thought. I thought he, the cue, he was going to lose the cue ball a little yeah. bit down table, but that was just a straight on shot. To, so that, that was a little different. That's the, exactly the way he should have hit it. If he missed it, the one would have been over here behind the 5, 7, and 8. Now this one, you know, he would really like to be back out in the middle of the table, but by trying to do that, it increases the difficulty of the shot, somewhat. There, he's perfect. Now yeah, this is a, a, a you got that he's got to bring the cue ball right about back. This is a tough out because you got to go yeah, back, back yeah. and forth, back and forth, and back and forth again. And this is a cru this is a critical shot because if you're gonna if you're gonna make a mistake, the error has to be too steep on the five. If you get too shallow on the five, then you can't play position on the seven. Right. Up to the middle of the table. He's coming too far. He's going to be behind the seven. That's that was a no no. That was a no no. He left Nick back in the game, which uh, that's 
Well, I'm going to tell you what happened there. See, I analyzed everything real fast, and, and he probably did too. He wound up cutting the five or the four more than what he wanted to. He hit the outside of the pocket, not the full center of the pocket. If he hit the full center of the pocket, the cue ball would have been out further. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happened. So he, he, cut he it, a little he thin. A little on thin. The four. It created yes, more, s more speed on the cue ball. Well, also, the angle was more steep off of the cushion toward the side. That ball would have been going toward the middle of the table instead of... Right, because he would have hit more of yeah. the ball, right. But that's, ex you know, exactly what you're talking about. A lot of times... What was that? I have no idea. What was that, Nicholas? A lot of times, th the best... the single, For all you aspiring players out there, the single best opportunity for you to learn is right after the shot right after the mistake you know so if uh if you get distracted or you get angry at yourself you're losing a very prime opportunity to learn how to play the game if you realize what your mistake was now you know if you ask dennis what did i do on that he would say absolutely and and just in a split second i hit the four too thin yeah i mean you know he knows why he sure. did what he did and that's what you have to do because that's how you learn that's that's right he's hitting this in the side pocket too Coming two cushions up. Well, he's let Nick back in the game. I think we're going to see a ball game here. I mean, uh, he could have took a very commanding lead there, and uh, he let him back into the package. Six to three, or seven three. Eight two seven three is a, is, a, is a big difference. Well, it's 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 a, probably the difference in Nick could win um, three out of ten at eight to two, and he might win four out of ten at seven to three. That sounds about right. <laughs> well, well, given the way this table is breaking right now, you know the soft break and making a ball. Yep, we're going to have a little break in the action here. Nick's going uh, to take his uh, smoke break. Is he still smoking cigarettes? All right, folks, I think we'll take a little break right now. We'll sharpen up our tapes and, uh, and see you in a few minutes. Well, folks, here we are uh, back at the table. Nick Varner getting ready to break. The score is... Uh, Seven to three in favor of Dennis Hatch. Uh, Nick's got his uh, mind back together, I guess. Uh, Nick's got a fresh piece of gum. My trident stock went up. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> uh, Dennis went, washed his hands, just took his watch back off. And uh, Nick, again, unfortunate that he breaks the balls, makes the corner ball, the one and the cue ball go up the table, and now the seven. Again, right it was the seven yeah. the last time, too, yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> what a difference a ball makes, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> he looks a little bit more determined, though, doesn't he? I mean, he, he's not going to surrender. If anything about Nick Varner, he's not going to give up and just go ahead and give you the match. Oh, I like this. Look at the two, three, six, yeah, the, the wedge. Big wall, big wall. He's got the wedge. Big wall there. That's a good shot. That's a very, very nicely played shot. Looks like he hit it's one cushion, though, uh, which uh, he got a little fortunate. Another couple well, inches over, and he wouldn't have been able to do this. Now Dennis has the same equity with a 5.89. Oh, he might have made this ball. Except he's going to make it. He and can he, make the two. And he can make the two ball. He can make the two. You know, it's like a free shot. If you miss the shot, I think you're going to tie six. him up. Yep. Yeah. Just make sure you cut the ball thin enough. Yeah. Free shot at the money here. Make this looks like you get out. This is this is one of those stay down, just hit it pure and oh, he hit that hard enough to go around the table. I didn't know he was going to wind up doing that. I, it, that didn't make no sense, that, did that, it? No. What no, did he do really, there? It really didn't. He was try he was trying to make the two and go around the table, you, and he hit the two thinly. Cue ball hit the seven right in the nose, and now. Nick runs out. Right. I mean, if he had made the ball, the ball would the cue ball would have slid. He would have been down at the. I mean, uh, I don't know it what brings he brings the there. eight nine yeah. into play. Yeah. A lot, you know, That's, there's a lot. Uh, that was a little suspect. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, of course, rolling that ball is not easy, but that's the only way to shoot it. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to go for it, you might as well do it the right way. Yeah. 
Well, this position from the three to the five is a little tough because of the position of the six and, of course, the eight and the nine, uh, you know, are blocking the natural path. You would play the five ball by the seven in the right. lower you've left corner. Get, you've got to get your cue ball either either from from right here to here. Yeah. Either then you get straight, you can draw the ball back. If you get the angle, you can you should go come to the down cushion. this way. Every, eventually, you want to be down in here. Yeah. The five ball has to go in the lower right hand, you know, most likely go in the lower right hand corner. He's going to try to get the. He's got the angle. Now he's got to follow this ball with a, with a little bit of left hand spin. This is judge the speed because you're coming across the angle. Gonna hit the cue ball high. Nice, nice follow stroke. He used a little bit of check right on there. Yeah, he kind of stunned it a little bit, yeah. I think he's got an extra piece of, ch of gum in there now. It looks like, <laughs> like twice as big as it was before. <laughs> That's that bit new expanding gum. Mm. Are you going to intentionally brush the nine? Or are you going to try to you miss them? You know, it's too difficult I think you're going to miss both. both. Yeah, miss both. You just slide right up. Oh, he bumped that one. Made for a longer shot in the six, but that's okay. Uh, he's he's got to get, you know, he's got to get, hit this ball. Not going to do anything too fancy here. I, I would just leave the cue ball, you know, just, you know, come off here, bump, and come, you know, just in that area there. I really think he's going to try to let the stroke out. He's, 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 he's going to come down? way down on the ball. Oh, yeah, that was a lot easier than what it looked like to me. That's the right way to play the shot. Well, he still, he still had to hit that ball. Very well, you know, just just because of this velocity that he was yeah. hitting it, you know, that that diminishes the size of the pocket and how well it will accept the ball. Didn't look to me like he was able to do that, but uh, yeah, he looked like he had a bigger angle than where he had to bounce out. But everything worked out well, and uh, that trip to the bathroom uh, worked at least for that this rack anyway. Well, I tell you what. Dennis Hatch will have nightmares if Nick's win, when Nick wins this match over that four to the five shot where he scratched in the side. Because yep. Yep. that was, uh, you know, a huge momentum swing. It's uh, two games now and counting. Mm -hmm. And it's got his confidence building, and it's got the Dennis uh, thinking a lot more. Scratching his chin. He's mm -hmm. doing his uh, the thinker imitation over there. Varner likes it down in Florida, bought himself a new home down there. I mean, uh, and says it's uh, just wonderful, you know. I mean, well, it's uh, golf 300 days a year and yeah. fish 65. Come on. There's How bad can it be? <laughs> All right. There's a lot, been a lot of pool players moved down there. You know, the yeah. Florida tour is starting Ooh. to look like a world championship <laughs> tour. <laughs> it looked like, like the PBT. Yeah. yeah, he didn't make a ball this time, but the seven still got him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is with that seven? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay attention next time and see where uh, the seven is racked. What's he going to do here? Try to kick behind us? Oh, this is a good shot. Oh, you got a little unfortunate. That, that was going to be a good shot. Especially if it clips the three and stays behind the two. Right. Because it opens the balls up and leaves Nick hooked. So now Nick just uh, uses the five, seven, the two, three. Yeah, Nick cannot hit the, the right-hand side of the ball to put him behind the two and three. Oh, he's going left with the cue ball behind yeah. the five seven. Just right behind the five seven. That's all he can do. He would really like to nudge that ball, but he can't take the risk, of, you know, trying to get too fancy. Now, see, this is a you know, this is a little bit of a tricky hit. He's going to roll this ball, I think. Just roll up on it and try to hit maybe the side of it and just bounce out just a little bit. Oh, nope. Now he's going to be well, in deep trouble here. He's going to separate the two and the three and just nudge it and just put the one down table. Uh, yeah, the the one three go down table. The cue ball snugs up to the two and uh, yeah, it's advantage. It's Nick. not the two. It's the four because the two is oh, not I here. See, yeah, I, I, I thought see. it was the same thing. Yeah. Uh, it must not have been laying the way we thought it was. Mm. Well, this is pretty good anyway because well, I mean, I mean, you know, both balls are going to come together here. So I mean, Nick figures they get a shot unless he makes the ball. Ooh. You know what I kind of liked right there? 
is playing two cushions and trying to hit thin on the one where the cue ball comes down table. If you leave the one anywhere on this rail, then the three blocks the pocket, and, yeah. the, and the cue ball has the potential to get, or you know, in the vicinity. That would have been two. a good shot. That, uh, yeah, that would have been a good shot. That was very Efren esque, mm -hmm. but um, you know, uh, Dennis tried to go ahead and go all out for the kick in. Well, yeah, I, I don't think he was trying to kick in. I think he just wanted to hit and get lucky, but there was no way to get lucky. I mean, with the ball coming down that way, the whole side of the table there was open to have a shot. The only way to get lucky, make was it. The, it yeah. the best way was what you said. Hit the side of the ball, you would have been way better off. Anyway, Which it looks really to me he's got to go up to do and down. I mean, just, uh, just let the cue ball go. Go up to the between the five and the pocket up table there and come straight back down. No, he played the oh, safe. He's going safe. This is... Uh, this is Oh, well, it came out two inches from being spectacular. And uh, Dennis, is, I mean, this is no easy shot. And uh, there's really he he still has to deal with the six ball and the two ball doesn't go by the eight. I don't right, think. But the two and the eight turned out to be a little bit easier combination. If he comes in, this is tough, though. You got to spin this ball a little bit. I don't know. It's tough. Dang. Yeah. Tough shot. Tough. I think he's got to go ahead and try to make the ball, though. I don't think there's much else to do. And that's what's going to happen. But, you know, the whole thing about yeah. that is evaluating the reward versus the punishment. You know, even if you make the ball, you know, what's the reward? Right. Well, he, he, he tried to miss the ball coming out from the, po uh, from the cushion there, but he wound up catching it. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, he got fortunate enough to where he could see the two ball here. He's going to try to rest the cue ball under the eight. Mm -hmm. and he might have snugged up to the eight. Nope. According mm -hmm. to his demeanor he certainly didn't right and, but there's not much to do he's going to wind up playing the safety send the two ball up table bring the cue ball back back behind the eight yeah i don't know if the speed's on to do that you uh i kind of like going to the rail first with the two and like maybe the two into the three that seems like a you know the natural angle that brings the cue ball back under the eight yeah, you mean shooting the two Second ball up to the pass the side pass the side you might right leave here. a shot though i mean uh well, you have the nine as a blocker as well. So you're basically playing here. all out on the cue ball. Yeah, you're right. You're, gonna, you're playing all out on the cue ball if you do that. See, the speed wasn't there to get it over here where, where I said. See, the speed wasn't on to do what he tried to do there. He's scratching that. What, 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 what happened here? What, 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 what? <laughs> well, let's see. Dennis usually comes with these kind of shots. He's a real good shot maker. This you just want to make the ball. Make sure you don't hit the seven coming off it. And just follow down, come bounce right back up. And the way you do that is to not hit oh, it too hard. Miss the ball though. And did he get? No, I think he left him a shot. Well, the bo the way they both look, he's straight in. That you know is something that I've noticed that Nick has done a couple of times. The very first game, he tried to play a safety and scratched. And that safety was very uncharacteristic for Nick to neither control the cue ball or, cue right, ball or the, the object ball. You're talking about, yeah, you went yeah. two cushions, went in the corner pocket. Well, you know here I mean? this is uh, turning pretty easy now. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, that's, uh, in, in my opinion, I think that that's probably one of Nick's greatest strengths is his uh, shot selection, especially in safety play. You know, he's going to shoot the right safety right. almost always. Right. You know, and his execution, too. I mean, even, yeah. even if he does this little something wrong, he executes so well. That it usually doesn't get him in trouble. Right. Right. This is just follow down, bounce right back up, the five in the left top corner pocket. Now we come out two cushions. Either way, whatever he felt more comfortable with. Oh, now he's just right. Just draw the cue ball down between the six and the nine. Just make sure you get slightly beyond straight in on the six and the side. Or is he too straight? I on think he's six? too straight on. I on think he'll five. draw back, play the six yeah. down the corner. It looked like he had to cut. You know, initially when I looked at it, it looked like he had to cut the five a little bit to the left. Right. But yeah. I see now on the yeah, on the uh, straight. He's just got to draw it back a little bit further than where the cue ball is right now. Okay, and you're going to draw back for the seven in the same pocket you just made the five ball. Are you going to the side cushion? I'm going to the cushion on yeah, this, yeah. Too. Because like you're talking about, it, it, it's keeping the cue ball on the line that you want to be on longer. Yeah, there it is. That's beautiful. Oh. Drew it too far. 
Well, he's got uh, it in he the side pocket. Have, I don't he may have think drawn, he drawn it just enough. <laughs> he said, man, look at him looking right at Boy, but I got a powerful stroke, he's saying, man. I just like, touched that ball, flew back. Thank you, Simonis. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it shouldn't be that easy to draw the ball like that. Nick's going, now, hit, how did I hit it that poorly and wind up this perfectly? <laughs> Well, not perfect, but yeah. very manageable. See, he didn't get that much further down the table with that particular <laughs> shot, but but that's how a straight that's how a straight pull the player thinks. So it's a one ball closer oh, means yeah, a lot, absolutely. you know. So I'll do whatever I got to do to get closer to the ball. As long as it doesn't take largely, away from the percentage, largely increase the difficulty. Uh, of the exactly shot. right. Yeah. I mean, you can't sacrifice one ball closer for increasing the shot thirty difficulty thirty percent. Right. Okay, now right. match. Seven to five. Dun, 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 dun. Slowly he crept. Ball by ball. And, rack and, by rack. And, and how do you do it, Jim? How do you get involved in these AccuStats matches that, that always turn out to be these, like, clip? <laughs> is, like, uh, Nick going to, like, oh, is he going to, like, kick a ball four rails in and go two rails for position and a la Efren in, uh, in Reno? That was your initial an inaugural <laughs> AccuStats match. The most watched AccuStat single shot in the whole history of the world. You know, come on. You know, funny things like that, you know, <laughs> funny things like that follow me everywhere. So, you know, I could go to the... Smile, a, we're a, on candid camera. A, a, <laughs> boxing match it's going to be the best boxing match ever i can go to a football game and be the best football game ever and whatever i go see it turns out to be the best match and i this is probably going to oh. be a 10 10 here oh uh, nick's face angst disgust yeah that's uh, if dennis takes advantage of this he'll put the momentum right back in his pocket where, where nick just had to turn it around this is yeah. a, this is big this for dennis and they're laying Cosmo. easy here we're going to do a little dancing around the table yeah, on this. Yeah, the spin and, you know, and everything. Stop yeah, yeah. And no, everybody's lost that. They, they forget who Tom Cosmo <laughs> was. For those that don't know it, I'll sum this up real fast. I've told this story a million times. But a Cosmo, there was a guy named Tom Cosmo. He used to set the balls up and do a dance routine around the table and make all easy shots, but uh, making get a Cosmo run out. That's basically what the story was. And, uh, and so that's what this, this run out looks like. You, th it looks so easy. You could just like dance you, around this run out. Right. And it looks yeah. like you set the balls up because every, everything's laying in the, you know, the right succession. I mean, you just go up there. The one's next. Like, stop. Connect the dots. Yeah. No work. Not a lot of traffic. Right. You, you know, like the five is straight just straight out. The six is right there. Stop the ball. Seven's right there. I can't get over this table. I know I'm going to say it about 30,000 more times. Beautiful that, table. It's incredible. I think the, what is this, $20,000 or something? Could be more. I don't know. It just seems like that's the number I heard on this table. I, I believe that's, uh, I believe that is correct. Draw the cue ball back. It's nice to draw the cue ball back to the cushion and back out. Even if you got to cheat the pocket, make a bigger angle. It's just... Uh, you just make sure you don't wind up on the cushion. Well, he did the same thing that Nick did on the six. He overamped a little bit on the eight. I mean, of course, this is, you know, 98% make, but more difficult than it had to be. Right. It, yeah. Possibility. Any possibility yeah. is, is, is an assured thing. Yeah. Eight to five. It's Carmine Sardo racking the balls there with his uh, Sardo rack that, the uh, that's becoming very popular in the billiard scene. Frozen rack every time. <laughs> no little gaps, no little... Uh, uh, there's not much inspecting the rack with the Sardo mm -hmm. tie rack. Of course, you can't see any of the balls under the rack, but hey. I yeah. think that's probably the most important thing that happened with the rack is because all players are always afraid of the other guy doing something to the other guy on the on the, on the rack. Uh, with this particular rack, you're not allowed. I mean, you can't. Let's put your say hands what it on is. the ball. Yeah, let's say what it is. You can't <laughs> cheat on the rack. <laughs> Because it wasn't at one time, one time the players let's used to, Let's use manipulate. Let's not say cheat. I mean, you know. At one time the players are starting to make it so comical. They said it wasn't how good you played. It was how good you racked. <laughs> oh, yeah. He gives him the seven racking. Oh, man. Well, they're both starting to miss some balls. I mean, not good. 
Well, here's a shot. Is he going to shoot to make this ball? I think so. I think he shoots to make it. And, uh, you know, one, one bit of equity that he does have is the position of the six ball. If he doesn't make it, that six becomes like a watermelon. You right. know, and, uh, and uh, you know, he doesn't really have to do a whole lot to get position. The three ball is close to the lower left pocket. Johnny Irvellino showed me how to make this ball, and, and, and it's such a such a big thing that the, I'm not even going to tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> it really is. How what can he, you not? He told it's a big secret, and I'm not <laughs> sharing it. <laughs> I had a promise, and when he told me, so. <laughs> oh, so now you're going to like break the second rule of pool yeah. players and keep a promise? <laughs> It wasn't that. This, he, this he is it. Tell, no, he <laughs> Duck. That. Duck. That was that was a very well played shot. And of course, you know, Nick evaluated the situation and decided the shot was not worth the risk. You know, yep. I mean, he didn't feel like he could control the cue ball. I think if the four ball had not been there, he would have shot it. Mm. But you know, he was a little uncertain how the cue ball was going to come off the four, so he didn't take the chance. He knew he could perform the safety a higher percentage of the time of the time. So. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he has Dennis come to the table looking around the side of the six. That was a good, I mean, it, it was a good shot that he shot, I'll tell you. I, you know, it might have looked easier from down there, but the, from here it looked pretty tough to do what he did. He hit yeah. it perfect. Look at his jacked up over the eight, yeah. now a tough shot. They just, haven't, they just haven't really favored Nick at all. You know, this... Mm. These are really tough shots, and I will give you a tip on this kind of a shot. They've seen that I've let you hang it on the last one. This this is a, a shot that a player told me one time. It, you know, when you're shooting, you always look at the object ball last. When you're playing like that, when you're shooting a ball over, you know, when the cue ball's over a ball like this, this is the only time you look at the cue ball last. It's because the reason you miss the shot is because you wind up hitting the cue ball off to the side and the cue ball mass stays on you. Right. Where if you hit the cue ball in the center, it's your best chance of making the shot. So get your aim. It, wow. Nick knows the shots. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that shot is super shot. tough. But yeah. that keeps you from getting, you know, hitting off center of the cue ball and getting the mass A, which causes you to miss the ball. And, and it's easier to look at the cue ball and just make sure you hit the center after you get your aim, naturally. Well, there's more, more than one way to skin a cat because Earl looks at the cue ball last. Yeah, that's what I yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. the exception in many ways. So That's what you're supposed to do, hit the cue ball. Look at the cue ball last. So you make sure you hit the cue ball in no, the I'm center. No, I'm talking about on every shot. No. Of course. Earl looks at the, at the <laughs> No, he doesn't. Watch him. <laughs> Are you serious? He'll he admit to it. I can't believe that, oh, that he okay. looks. I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> now you'll hear worse before the week's out, I promise. So. Are you pulling my leg here, David? I, I, I can't, I've never heard of somebody playing a, pool and looking at the cue ball last on every shot. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to cost me a coffee. I can feel that coming. Okay. <laughs> Well, and I'll back off the Earl prognostication. How's that? Every, everybody that gets this tape now, next time they see Earl playing, they're going to say, well, let's see his eyes. Let's see what he's doing. Because I sure will. I'll be him. looking. Well, he might tell you one thing, and, and he might even think he's looking at the cue ball last, but I don't think he is. I don't think you could play good pool doing that. Of course, he's got a loop de doop de <laughs> stroke like that. I mean, you might have to look at the cue ball last. Nick, Nick's making his soon, comeback. Soon to be. Only two games behind. It's going to be eight to six. Well, they've been running the balls pretty well, but it's been, you know, it's been working for the shot that has kind of shot both of them in the foot. You know, their safety play or, or uh, you know, kicking or... It's starting to be like a little bit of a blasé match right now because it's going back and forth and nobody's just like going ahead and taking the match off. But it's going to get exciting here in a couple more games because they're, it's tightening up, folks, and the, we all know what those uh, tight ones do at the end. I think everybody would rather come to a pool tournament and just see one game. You know, let all the pressure just be on the one game because, you know, you know the truth be told, 
people want to see pool players tortured. <laughs> <laughs> Danny De La Burrows always said that. <laughs> I mean, they want to see uh, the guy get, you know, the, the, the <laughs> grinding, <laughs> and the, you know, the balls all getting together, 10-10, and the guy dogs one here, another guy dogs it there. And people uh, like that more than seeing a guy break and run out perfect, I think. Well, you know, this is this is the kind of match that figured if it were close, then it favors Nick. If it's a runaway, it would be most likely Dennis. Right. Yeah, you know, Dennis has the, you know, higher octane right. offense, bigger break, you know. Um, you know, just he, he just has a larger offensive arsenal. However, the games that have to be played, safeties, kicking, maneuvering, favor Nick. I think he can make this ball. If he can make this ball... The percentage on this shot is after you just make it, let the cue ball come there and come into them. Let's see something happen. Something can happen. It's he awfully thin, and he's behind the six. Very, very good nice shot. Yeah. Now, this forces uh, Dennis to go left of the nine and uh, spin the cue ball up. I don't, he can't go by this. Doesn't yeah, look he, like. Yeah, he's got a mass A and come in the, off the back cushion. Oh, he almost made the ball. You know, he tried to make the ball, too. Well, that yeah, was, there was no reward. Angle. And, yeah, if he made the ball, he was going to be behind the seven anyway. There was, I, I would have rather prefer hitting the back cushion and come up and bump the one back. You could have slid underneath the five or whatever. And yeah. This is just you have to get between the seven and nine here and get position on this uh, two ball. One cushion or hit the second cushion. What is he doing here? The three ball is next. This oh, is that's four. the four. I keep getting those two mixed up. It's tough to see on the screen or something. Or maybe it's just me. I'm glad I can tell when I'm down there. <laughs> 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 Well, it's next after this, and so he's got to have to get between the seven yeah. and nine. It's sooner or later. This is a perfect angle. Yeah. He's got on the three yeah, ball, just bounce. Yeah, this is much more natural to get there yeah. than the last shot was. This is just plain high ball just comes straight across the table and judges the speed. Perfect. That's perfect. Yep. He just goes to the cushion out past the seven, right, out past the six. Or between the six and seven. Yeah. Just these kind of shots, make sure you make the ball. Just make the ball. You can't go wrong with anything. Just stay down, follow through, make the ball. Ooh, he could have got that, jacked up. That, that would have been, yeah. yeah. been about the only thing he, you know, yeah. that could have happened there that, you know, unfavorable mm -hmm. if, he, if he winds up, you know, obstructed by the seven. Right. He can cue low enough here to where he get, he'll draw it yeah. back for the six on the side. They play for the seven on the opposite side, and bing, bang, it's going to be a one-game ball game. And with Nick breaking. Dennis had a chance to put him away early. And get, kept letting him uh, get back in. I mean, two or three had different opportunities had to do that, and then he's let him escape. Had a chance to so, make it 8-2. So. And well, then that game you know, was seven three. You know, he's been away for a year and nothing comes easy. Nothing you know, no, you just ain't gonna jump out there and have somebody just give you something. You're gonna have to have to take it. Especially a player like Nick, he is gonna take it if you give him enough opportunities. <laughs> He has such he is such a bulldog competitor. You know, you just, you know, re regardless of the score, you, you always feel like he has got a chance to come back. You know, he's such a workaholic. I mean, he, you know, when, you know, you can be some, somewhere with him in the afternoon and think, okay, the day's over, you're going to go to sleep. So I'm going to go down the pool and practice three, four hours. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen nothing like it. Yeah, I mean, he makes phone calls to do exhibitions. He does this, the that. I mean, he, I mean, he just never slows down. He's just, uh, just loves what he's doing and works hard at it. Well, he's been rewarded for it. Yeah, as sure, well. yeah, he's had yeah. a brilliant cor uh, career. Yeah, Hall good of Fame lifestyle. career. Yeah, good lifestyle. Yeah, well, I mean, how can you go wrong? 300 yeah. days of golf, 65 <laughs> days of fishing. What do, you, what do you want? That may be a little bit out of proportion. 
I mean, maybe 295, <laughs> 65, you know, 70, something like that. But. Yeah, he got kissed back down, and cue ball was going to be around the center of the table. He would have had a better shot on the one ball, but it got bumped. I'm looking for the seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> for once, it's not yeah. in the it's not not he, in the shot. You know, I mean, here's a shot that you go uh, go for, and, try, and the two is hanging, right? That is the two this yeah. time. Okay. Uh, I mean, you can. No, it's not. It's the four. Is it the four? Yeah. yeah so now he has so to go from the one to the, to the same, three. Yeah, it looks so close to the same color on the screen. One to the three. He does not have the green light on this shot. Uh, he's played the save, trying to put him behind the six. You know, I played a lot over in England playing snooker and, uh, and the shot. colored balls like the four. There's no number on the balls, but let's call it the four is brown. Uh, you know, in, if you go to the clubs and play, when they put it on TV, they actually make it beige and it shows up brown. Right. Uh, but and, and then if that's on, on the BBC, uh, but on ITV over there, they use a different color brown to make it show up the natural brown. Wow. So there's something in these things. I don't know. I guess if we asked Pat Fleming, he would know all about that. Uh, you know, but there's different colors they use that come on in different screens to, depending upon the equipment that you have. Don't ask uh, me what I just said. I don't have that, a clue. That was a very close hit. Dennis Massade around the six. Very close on the hit, but it was a good hit. And again, um, you know, Nick is in a difficult position. Not that the shot is all that difficult, but uh, he's, he wouldn't be rewarded with a shot on the three. So does he play safe now, or does he try to take a shot on the one, risk missing it, and then playing a safety on the three? Uh, I don't think he's going to shoot at this one ball and try to draw it back. He's just faking everybody out there. <laughs> hey, you, you and Buddy. You know, Buddy was saying, he's, gonna, he's just teasing. He's not going to do that. You know, I, I, anytime your opponent's elbow goes over their head, you've got the advantage. <laughs> right. right. You know? I, I love it. I love seeing the guy's elbow go over his head. I, you know. The safety's not laying that easy, you know, because the oh, side no. pocket's in the way, you know. I mean, to shoot the one, you know, to get it up behind the six, the, mm -hmm. the, the side mm -hmm. pocket's in the way. Now, he could play to cut the one into the six, the cue ball out behind the five. Yeah, uh, tough control. you got to yeah. stop the, yeah, it's too, too tough of control there. I mean, it's easier to control that than you know, with your he, elbow You know, your he, he might <laughs> shoot the elevated shot here. I'm, as I'm looking at the shot here, it's not a bad shot. I mean, because the safety's not easy. And so you might get a safety with the elevated shot. I think he's going to go for the shot. What do you think of that? I think he's going to use the elbow. I mean, Boy, I, yeah. can I call him when, or what? When I'm in the chair and the guy's elbow goes over his head, I'm going to go ahead and start talking up. Did I, yeah, Unless see, the guy's name is Look at this shot. Night. Look at this shot. He got perfect. Oh, my goodness. What do you mean goodness. he got perfect? The tree ball's right there. Isn't that what he's playing for? Uh, he's, he's hooked. No, oh, he can get by that, oh, can he? Come on. Oh, he's oh look, look at, look at it, that. Just by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, how oh, well, hard now, luck is that? Now you kick the, now you kick safety. You can kick the three ball. You're going to kick Gee at it? Whiz. You can't I mean, risk it at 8-7 kicking at it. I think he wants to shoot. I, mean, I it's just know he wants to shoot it. little bitty, 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 bitty mess here. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm, you know, I'm getting my know. Coke back if he mass <laughs> this ball. <laughs> Gee, hit that I'm one ball my money so back. good. Man, did he oh, hit that one good. But it was the right shot. It was the percentage on the shot. If you miss it, anything is going to be behind these balls. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, I mean, so it. it was all percentage. Well, he hit it beautifully, but. He could bank this ball, you know. <laughs> oh, be still my yeah, heart. You know, uh huh. <laughs> he had a one pocket player in a nine ball game. That's he, all he, had I know. A, he, had, he, had, he had a big hole there to oh, bank yeah, that. Oh, yeah, with the four? This, so, yeah. A lot of guys might not even have seen that shot. You did I see think it. there were two of us. <laughs> that makes no, two I seen of us. it right before he, before oh, he put the cue down. I seen it and said it right after. Right, you do this on Monday. <laughs> you, you bet on football games on Monday. <laughs> Boy, I like those Ravens yesterday. Did you see that? No, I didn't no, see I was kidding. <laughs> anyway, he's uh, he's tied the game here. You know, folks. I mean, he made a great shot on the one. Wow. Come back with the bank. Great on, shot on the on three ball. Three ball, wow. man. I mean, you're seeing the. Now, what I tell you, every time I sit down in this chair doing the commentary, you, you get to see one heck of a match. And you're going to see one here. The climax of this is going to be great, I think. That, this was one professional rack here. I mean, uh, Nick made a cracker and a shot on the one ball there. Man, did he. Whoa, is Dennis. Look at him. He's starting to, to twitch, <laughs> twiddle to in the chair over there. Yep. <laughs> yep. 
Now he's looking every place but the pool table. You know, I mean, he has to know. He's had uh, the opportunities yeah, that he's we'll had, the unfortunate situations that Nick has had, you know, through none of his own doing necessarily. Um, now the match is tied after 16, eight yeah. games apiece. All right, we're going to take a little break right now. We're running out of tape. We said we had one fast player and one slow player. It's averaging out that we have to change the tape. How do you like that? Be right back. All right, uh, here we are. We're back. Nick broke faster than uh, he's been shooting, so you didn't get to see quite the whole break. <laughs> but uh, anyway, nothing really has happened. I mean, he just broke the balls and did make a ball. But made a ball. Is that the seven obstructing the path of the one to yep, the pocket? Yep, seven's well. in play again here. I think I would trade that seven in like on like maybe a new green Hyundai or something. I don't know. If that is the case, he's just going to thin this and put it up in the top cushion and come down between these balls, try to maybe either bring the cue ball on the left side of the two ball or bring yeah. it in between the two and the three behind the nine, anywhere down table. But what he's going to do, he will make a decision up in his mind which way he's going. I like I like to the left of the two cue balls. Maybe ball the one the goes here. You know? Yeah, the one goes. It's, it didn't. It certainly didn't look like it. Look at this. He's going to go behind the nine. Oh. Is that cold or what? That doesn't figure to happen, especially after the last no. rack. You know, you figure to you know to get the right bump there. That that's well, this he could have done that again in a million yeah. years. <laughs> Ain't nobody up there right now. Well, if the fans like a little agony, they just got some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This would be a perfect jump shot right here if if. Uh, and no lob wedges yeah. here at the at the U.S. Open. I don't Thank like you. that jump shot. Oh. I mean, I think they're taken away from the game there too. I think oh. you make the game like a tiddlywinks. You know, it's stupid. Jump balls. I mean, if you jump with your own cue, that's a heck of a shot. Well, that's what I say. You, no breaking out the sand wedge. No yeah. breaking out the lob yeah, right, wedge, right. and just you know, you know, uh, that really takes an element of safety play so much out of the game yeah. when you can do that. And if you can jump with your own cue, then more power to you. But. Um, you know, they don't do that in uh, in England. They don't allow jump shots with your own cue with the you know on the snooker, mainly because you damage the table. I mean, you put dents all over it. I think he's going to kick to make this ball. <laughs> and I got that out. <laughs> yeah, just Did in I get time. That out in time. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, he time. was he was winding up. There wasn't an easy you know kick safety there, and uh, you know he's he figures to make that. 40, What's the percentage out of Forty percent of the time. You think 35, you make that 40? 40, sure, you I got it down to thirty-five, forty. I think, I think sure, thirty, forty. No kidding. I, I don't know. I mean, it's. I don't know about at that pace. He did hit it pretty firmly, but. I wouldn't want to shoot that for the grocery money. Put it no, there. No. <laughs> anyway, here's the shot, folks. This is the biggie right here. This is uh, this could win or lose the match right here because, and you're supposed to make it. I mean, a pro player is supposed to make it. Not 100% of the time, but uh, you're supposed to make this ball. He has a little equity in the position of the six and nine. Yeah. You know, if he misses this ball, he's going to hit it at a speed, uh, you know, that, that the three ball may lay close to the pocket, and the six and the nine become huge. Yeah. You know, while they punished him on the shot where he was going from the two to the three, they may right. help him. Like the, you, you think he's going to hit this soft then, is what you're saying? I think he'll roll it. I no, think I think he's going to pop it. I don't. I don't think good players. I, I don't really think they like to hit it soft. I think he's going to hit this a little firm. See, and he he's made the nine. Look at look, 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 this! Oh nine. my goodness! See this? That's, that's unbelievable! I told you, folks, you're going to see it all here when I get behind this commentary booth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and there, I think you've just seen a major part of all. <laughs> Uh, now, how, that come, how, come that's, how come that's so much more painful than a nine on the break? Well, because you know I mean? you're trying to ride <laughs> balls on the break. I mean, there you're not even trying to move the nine. I mean, that shouldn't be in the game. It really shouldn't be in the game. I, I know the crowd loves luck. They love, you know, the, you know but it's just cheapers. You know what I mean? At this critical part of the game, I mean, here the guy's rewarded with almost a match by that. You know, I mean, that's just not fair. <laughs> Huge game, 9-8. Yeah. It's just not fair. I mean, there's, you know, of course, if that 9 doesn't go, there's no guarantee that Dennis wins the game. But he made a ball. He's going to get, get rewarded here. Nope. He got bumped a little bit there. He just play this left-handed. I, think, I he think, can, think he can make the ball, yeah. I think he could just pinch it in and hold the cue yeah, ball up I think, for the two. Yeah, yeah. 
this isn't as tough as you think. I think you can hit this with it like a little bit deep, deep low screw on the ball. And just a little pinch. pinch. Like peek, peek. I, little I really peek. like this shot. You know, yeah. it's a. You see the size of Nick's tip? I mean, it's down near the ferrule. It's about like a nickel. Not in yeah. radius, yeah, we in don't, depth. Yeah, we don't have no sponsors in the tips right now. Can I, I'll tell you a little something. Everybody, good players like the tip to be that low. But these new tips that are out right now, these uh, you know layered, layered tips, when the tip gets that low, you're playing on all glue. Yeah. And so, I mean, you're, it, it, the, the layered tips play good. But not quite that thin. But, but not when a player likes the size of the tip that's lower, they don't play that good. And so, they, you know. Yeah. I don't know if I'm agreeing with those leather uh, with those layer tips. Well, I know they certainly hold up well. Yeah, they're they're you they've know. been consistently uh, uh, closer to the same, but I mean when they get low, there's too much glue showing. Yeah. Oh, this is another easy you know easy five ball four ball out now. Yeah. Just lag the four end. And it and all he came, maybe that's cold man. Yeah. This all came from the luck in the nine ball end. I mean that. Well, what are you going to do? That's the way we have our rules. So He's going to shoot this one and just stay above the nine so he keeps a little angle on the six. We got a little I would have this. played above the nine to keep a little angle on the six. Yeah. Because yeah. I like going two cushions out on, you know, on the inside of the eight. Right, right. You, you know, if you stay. Like that. He's going to have to yeah. play the eight in the uh, up the top corner, I think. I don't think he's so The only other option is rail first. He's playing rail he's first, first and play the eight in the same pocket. No, it's close to the pocket. I guess it was okay. It That's was the cue ball, ball in the same position, but if you if you you know stop the cue ball between the nine and the right hand side rail, then you have the angle to go that way more naturally. Wow, what a difference! That uh, what a you know, you know they both played. Uh, I don't know what the stats are on this. Uh, but uh, uh, it looks to me like they both played pretty well. Uh, I mean, Varner had 10-8, but uh, to, to, to lose a match like this, uh, welcome back to the professional <laughs> pool, Dennis. <laughs> well, when he, you know, what really makes it painful is because he had such a commanding lead early. Yeah. You know, and was playing so well. So it is his fault. I mean, he should have took advantage of it. Like you said, that one shot where he came too far over with the fourth and five, that was the turning point. You know, that's the difference right there. He hit that four ball maybe an eighth of an inch too thin. Yeah, and it created the more speed. And, and you know, that, 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 that it just steamrolled from there. Yeah. Well, Nick had a little something to do with that, too. Yeah. But, you know, Dennis doesn't take his losses too well either. So, I mean, right now you haven't seen any, uh, any kind of expression, but uh, he hates to lose, and especially like this. Well, well, this is an opportunity for him to get a shot right here. This is, uh, of course, Nick is going to going to shoot it, but this is this is missable. Yeah, watch Nick. He, I mean, he does this like a real pro. I mean, he, he, watch if we can get his body on the camera. Why nothing's going to move? He's going to stay down in this shot like uh, you know, like you're supposed to. He's not going to shoot it until he gets ready, right? As well. I mean, you know, if if you're in the pool room and you're uh, and you're just you know, playing. I mean, you're not you're not going to walk around the table on this shot. And yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's make the ball. That's, that's all it. This is. Make the ball. You got an easy. Uh, yeah. the, is it a combination next? Yeah, that's the three. See, the three looks like the seven a little bit, but that's the three I looked. Well, he did come up a little bit, but he rolled the ball in. He just stayed down and rolled it. Well, his error was on the right was on the correct side. Right. He hit it a little too thinly. Yeah. I mean, if he hits that ball that Fuller, much yeah. it, too thick, that ball does not go. Right. No, just make the three, and you make the six. Well, he lucked the nine in, and Dennis never got back to the table. Well, <laughs> the, the one thing that Nick has to take caution on on this shot is the possibility that he could make both balls. Well, if that happens, he's going to be on that side of the table for the four, so... Ooh, we hit that on the white side. It was a big pocket. So, well, that's a, you know that's a situation where you know it, it's easy to get yourself in trouble if you don't pay attention to a minor detail like that. <clears throat> I 
Well, Jim, this could be the last few balls. It's been a, certainly a pleasure. Well, don't count the. Don't let, see what happens here. I mean, he's not out yet. Look at, look at, look at, look at. He's now he's short on this ball, you know. Now you are a true pool fan. <laughs> you want to see some suffering and struggling. I, you well, just, you just told me I just something. Know things, I just know things aren't <laughs> over until they're over. I mean, I've yeah. seen, I've, I've seen things. That, well, so have you. Have you been around this racket as long as I have? I mean, you've seen things happen that you just can't believe sometimes. And some of them involving Nick Varner. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, Mike Siegel jumps the ball off in the floor. How can you forget that? Yeah, this he's really come up short on this ball. He's just going to make this a little left hand spin and go back and forth across the table. He's over. <laughs> <laughs> he was just teasing. I was, yeah. <laughs> a little something for the fans. Yeah, anyway, just make this come one cushion straight up. Well. Well, folks, you've seen a pretty good match here. This, uh, I mean, it was really a good match. I think they've only made a few errors apiece. I mean, they hate to see uh, the winner win by a luck shot, but, I mean, he deserved it. He played good behind it, and uh, it was a great match. Yeah, he did. And, and, after, and after Dennis scratched, going from the four to the five, he won one more game. Yep, yep. That's, That's a shame. Know. Anyway. David, it's been a pleasure doing this. Yep, I've enjoyed it. Has. I mean, it was good. To, this is the first time we ever done one together. I look forward to doing more in the in the future. And uh, for everybody out there, I mean, you've seen some great pool. I think you've picked up a few tips. The one that I kept a secret, maybe someday I'll tell you, but you'll have to wait for next time. Anyway, and the way you'll find out about it, and maybe I'll advertise it. Maybe I won't. Otherwise, you got to buy more of these AccuStats, uh, you know, tapes. And for a catalog, you can call one eight hundred eight two eight. 0397 and you can pick up whatever you want anytime you want. Give us a call. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the show. See you next time.